So the intention today is that this be a, a constructive conversation. It's really going to be an overview and an introduction uh, to some of the challenges and concerns that creatives are facing. Um, sometimes it's a love-hate relationship even with social media and web-based tools. So we, we do want to precurse this by saying uh, after this event is over, we would love to invite you perhaps to a Facebook group, especially for this topic, so we could continue the conversation and unpack it further. My name is Guy Whitlock. My role with ACT International is the coordinator for staff care and community. Uh, I've been with ACT since about 2009. Prior to that, uh, for about 10 years, I was in ministry helping independent artists. Actually overlapped quite a bit with uh, one of our panelists today, Eric Copeland, that'll be sharing as well. Uh, so welcome. Um, and uh, I have already printed out some of the questions that you all sent in through email. And we have also some questions that will bring up to spark uh, some panelists dialogue. Uh, but I wanted to share with you kind of where we're headed today. Uh, many of us have been designed and called specifically to be specialists, creative specialists in the world, meaning that, yes, God's created all of us to be creative, but some of us feel this extra pull to use our gifts in a way that gives back to the world, sometimes professionally, sometimes bivocationally, sometimes it is purely freely given, trusting and believing for God's provision through the support of others. And hopefully you fall in one of those camps, uh, identifying yourself either as a creative specialist or someone who is in support or has passion for other creative specialists. Um, so we're very thankful that you're here. We see you as important, valuable, and very worthy of support. So I, I hope you will press into this idea of learning about even the monetization of social media as a potential for helping you meet the needs of your family and grow your ministry uh, to all it can be. Uh, you might be curious about ACT International. About 70% of the folks that are on here today are with us already. There is a good 10 or 12 folks that have not, may not know that much about ACT. I'd invite you to go to our website, actinternational.org, to learn a lot more. But in just a few words, we're a mission sending board specifically designed and created to help creatives and innovators. So we have 501c3 nonprofit status. When you apply to come along with us within just a few days, you're eligible to also be a nonprofit. So at that point, you can receive donations, support, uh, items, wish list items. Um, we also introduce you to training opportunities and you uh, have available to you a whole community of now 400 other ministries, 600 individuals that are serving, growing the kingdom around the world. I wanted to share with you a little bit about the panelists that are with us. I'll introduce you to them in a moment when we move past the slides, but we tried to have a good representation of folks from different walks of life. We have a, a, a musician who's also a producer, who also is an artist manager, and uh, I would say somewhat of a content creating uh, expert himself. Uh, we also have a former college student turned college social media manager, who's uh, going to talk about uh, how to grow your, your um uh, your, your network or your community virally a bit. Uh, and then we also have a hip hop artist and new author, new dad, uh, just amazing all around millennial uh, from the Chicago area as well. So I hope you'll enjoy uh, some of the interaction with these different folks. The format is today is going to be primarily dialogue between the panelists. We're going to use as many of your questions as we can and also pull from some of the ones that we've prepared. If you just really feel that there's something that God's prompting you to say, and you'd like to do more than include that in the chat, try to get one of our attention, throw a wave a hand or, or nudge Shira in the, in the chat, 
and we'll we'll try to let you have voice there but just want to be really sensitive to the time but know that we do really value what it is that you might have to say and then the goals for today we really want to focus on just a few areas we want to talk touch base on what are some of the realities what are some of the challenges that creatives are facing in the social media climate given covid uh, given the political unrest, given the unknowns of the economy, how's that playing in, even the reduction in live performance opportunities and such, how's that playing into things? Um, secondly, we want to look at a couple of key areas within social media, that is of content creation, that is of community building, and that it is of monetizing social media to try to advance your ministries. Our hope is to touch on some key topics within that family, knowing that we're certainly gonna leave something out in the mess. Just ask if you'd please mute your mic as you come on, guys. Uh, we've got a big group, thanks so much for being here, and uh, we'll use the chat window to contribute whenever we can. And then let's pray together. I would love it, love it. Ingrid, you have a wonderful prayer style. Would you be willing to pray for us this morning? Just a, a brief prayer uh, of encouragement. That'd be great. Sure. Father God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for how you gather your people together. And you call us each by name. And you know our inner thoughts before we even know them ourselves and and lord you know how to reach the unreachable and lord you also know how to reach those who are overwhelmed with communication and and lord today i'm just um asking that you would open our ears open our hearts let our minds receive a word from you lord as we attend this share and find time with one another in community Thank you, Lord. We ask for your blessing on this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Ingrid. I appreciate that. Okay, well, just before we step into talking about doing, which is what we so often do as humans, we like to rush into the doing. I wanted to take a quick moment to remind us to first embrace our identity in Christ as creatives. And, and the president of our organization often talks about using the symbol of the cross. If you can picture that vertical and horizontal image of the cross. If we'll be willing to focus on the vertical, take care of the depth of our relationship with Jesus, keep in the back of our minds that our God is a big God, and he's already capable of taking care of the breath. So we don't need to worry ourselves so much sometimes about how often we're seen, how big our platform is, whether we need to be in multiple contexts. It isn't saying that isn't important, but sometimes we get so focused on the horizontal that we fail to dedicate time every day to developing our deep relationship with the Father, who, as we know, is the provider of everything. So just a quick reminder to get us started, that first, God created everything and he created us in his image. He is a creative God, and as a creative God, he also wants to be our God, and he gives us the free choice to make that relationship true or whole. We can run from God, but he's going to pursue us relentlessly because we've been created in his image, which means that we are also creative and in our brokenness as humans, even as, I know you can probably relate to this, even as you doubt yourselves at times, even as you compare your art with your peers and sometimes feel like you come up short, recognizing that God is already filled in those gaps, he sees you perfectly, he sees your art perfectly, he sees that as not in competition with each other's art but rather the combining of all his creative works is what makes the change in the kingdom for his glory. And as being creatives ourselves, God created some of us to be specialists. And I feel that likely most of you here are either living out that specialty in this moment, or you're struggling yet a bit to how do you move from that passion that you have to be fully released 
in your ministry to do all the things you think you should be doing that you hear from God that he has for you as a creative specialist. The really cool thing about this is it's not about what we can do, but because we were, before we were even born, scripture tells us God already knew what he intended for us. He knew the plan he had for us and he knew the gifts that he was giving to us because, because God is eternal. We always were, we are, we will always be uh, as we are one with God. So I'm challenging all of us today. We're going to step into talking about a lot of doing and it's all good stuff. And we want to be talking about that. But at the end of the day, if we do that and we fail to embrace his commands, know his character and attempt to model that and trust in his promises, we're going to fall short if we put all of our energy into doing I hope you can relate to that a bit because that's perhaps meaningful to you in some ways. So let's get to the doing list. A short list of topics for today. There's a lot of them. It's not that short. What are the online need of creative, needs of creatives? What do COVID challenges look like? How do we talk about content or message, community or relationship and monetization or revenue uh, in a way that we can feel comfortable and effective within social media. And there's this idea of a social media pyramid that Eric Copeland that's with us really does a great job of unpacking. And we're arguing, if you will, that the social media pyramid starts with YouTube these days. And some would say, well, what's social about YouTube? And Eric might talk about that a little bit. There are some social aspects to YouTube. But if YouTube is at the top, where does Instagram fall? How important anymore is Facebook pages? Is Facebook groups relevant for building community for other things? One question came in through email specifically about social media aggregators. You might have heard of Buffer or Hootsuite that automates all the social media platforms into one click to send out media. Many of you may be on LinkedIn. There is likely a professional place for you to be connected at LinkedIn to advance some of your careers or your ministries. Patreon, monetizing. Is Patreon a good place to be, to be doing some, some connecting, to be building some content? Some of us are authors. It's hard to be a new author these days with not, without dabbling in Amazon. Some of you create art. I know, Ingrid, you make things with glass, beautiful things with glass. Some of you may do the same. Is Pinterest and Etsy a possibility for you? And then what does ACT International bring to the table? We won't get to all these things, but this is the family or range of things that we'd like to attempt to talk about a little bit today. Niche marketing. Throughout this whole time, I can ask you to consider the possibility that the future doesn't look like mass sales on Amazon. It doesn't necessarily look like mass spins on Spotify or Walmart types of marketing approaches. What if you were to create a cottage-like fan base or a cottage-like community where every time you created something, your followers instantaneously wanted that? They wanted the, the blog content. They wanted the teaching, the music, the physical items. Um, that is being suggested as maybe one of the trends in the near future, even with social media. Well, good. That brings us to the end of the slide. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, which should open up a bigger window and give an opportunity for uh, the presenters to join in. So I'd, I'd love for uh, Eric and for Noah to pop in, introduce yourselves. Maybe Eric, you could go first and just tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, you know, such, that'd be fantastic. Sure, my name is Eric Copeland and I am a creative wrangler. I work with creative people just about every day and also wrangle all of my creative ideas and brands 
but basically I am a creative brand creator, mainly uh, starting in the music world with music artists, but also with artists and also with other, um, other kinds of creatives. It's really uh, refreshing to see all these different kinds of creatives here in this uh, thing here from uh, authors to circus performers to uh, all sorts of things. It's just really, uh, it's, it's kind of a dream of mine to be involved with a lot of different kinds of creatives like that. So my daily work is usually with artists, helping them make their music or have it made in Nashville and then helping them on the marketing side, especially doing uh, social media stuff all day long, um, YouTube, uh, getting them to the um, all the digital music stores and everything that goes with trying to help them, just like you guys, help them create a daily interaction with the public, with their creative thing, whatever that is. So that's what I do all day. Besides, and I have my own music brands as well. And uh, I'm about to finish a, a master's in uh, music composition. Um, and so all that kind of stuff is going on, but mainly my day work is just what we're getting ready to talk about here. And that is how to help people with social media and how to uh, traverse all the different places. So. Thanks so much, Eric. And uh, Eric alluded to it, but he's an amazing jazz pianist and uh, has several albums available. Uh, just a great individual, a man of God and a servant of others. I've uh, been so happy to know him for many years. And thank you, Eric, for being on today. Uh, C-Dub, would you be willing to jump on and let us know about yourself? Yeah, my name is C.W. Allen, and uh, I'm a hip-hop artist based out of Chicago, originally from Cleveland, been here about 10 years, and uh, got my degree at Moody Bible. That's why I came here, met my wife, and never left, so I've been a Chicago native for a while now. But yeah, I uh, started doing music when I was 19. Uh, prior to that, I was just a freehand artist, would draw comic book characters and all of that, and never thought I would be an artist in, in a musician sense. But started rapping and, and freestyling, and next thing I knew, I was writing songs and albums. So I've been doing that for years now. And um, I'm also an author, just released a book and album together called The Catalyst, and um, excited about that. And speaker, I do a lot of speaking as well, a lot of uh, hitting churches and preaching, but then also speaking in mainstream secular venues i guess you would say just uh, encouraging folks in that way and then the last thing that i'm well the last two things that i'm doing right now is uh working full-time with the ministry in chicago on the south side called bridge builders so we talk through uh issues of race faith and justice so we bring folks to together and they talk about um, those issues but then we also help them to process god's heart for the city um, dispelling stereotypes, thinking through the scripture, what God has to say about different people groups and all of that. And then the very last thing is I am working with the startup record label as the operations manager. So um, working. <laughs> then I'm a dad and a husband. <laughs> That's the big bulk of my job. Awesome, CW. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's great to see we've got 29 folks on, and I'm noticing we're representing places all around the world, uh, Tanzania, uh, Europe, variety of West Coast, East Coast, and in the, in the States. It's uh, fantastic to have all these different perspectives. Uh, Noah Whitlock, who I'm proud to say is my son, would you share a little bit about your world? Hello, everybody. Um, obviously, I am Guy's son, um, but I work as the uh, marketing and communications person uh, for the Office of Admissions at Coastal Carolina University. Um, I received both my bachelor's degree and master's degree from Coastal Carolina University and uh, had the privilege of being able to return there and work. Um, basically, my day-to-day -day job is to bring students into the institution, but through marketing, social media, um, and different types of uh, strategies, especially with the current COVID challenges, um, to present the university to students, um, obviously, to show them what we have to offer and then bring them into the university. Um, I also spend some of my personal time working with people um, that I meet in various ways um, and giving them ideas and ways to, to influence them and whatever their end goal is 
and to work through um, their social media, their media, their marketing strategies and, and figure out whether they're effective or not for what they're actually trying to do. And if it's not work through um, ideas and concepts to, to better their direction to, to achieve those goals. Thank you, Noah. And um, not for, for now, for another time, but if you have any marriage advice for Noah, he's newly engaged. So I'm sure he'd appreciate that another, another time. Awesome. Uh, I think we've included everyone. Shira, thank you so much. You wanted to say a quick a little shout out and, you know, a bit about your new job and such. That would be great. Uh, yeah, my name is Shara Cooney. Uh, I actually been in sales and a business development center manager at a car dealership. So I was doing their social media and kind of looking at the Google Analytics, seeing who's on the website who and what works and what doesn't. And then from there, I really got a passion for marketing. And I just joined a, a business, IQ Nection, out of Pennsylvania that does digital marketing and um, creates awesome experiences on the digital platforms, so including social media. Thank you, Shira. Appreciate all your gifts, for sure. Well, good. Well, just for sake of time, I'm wanting to stay on target here. I wanted to throw out a question, and I'll I'll point this toward Eric, maybe to start things off. But um, you know, any of you from the panel, feel free to to jump in. Uh, so, uh, what are you hearing or discerning are some of the most pressing social media needs for creatives? You guys are in and around it. What are you sensing or hearing? Some of the most pressing media needs for creatives. Well, I would say that what I have found recently, and that, and I have been doing uh, so much focus on trying to get out uh, a lot of media, whether it's something for a client who has just released a some kind of music thing or a video, or it's something I've just released as a video or a music thing. Um, trying to figure out what is the best and cheapest way, because you can spend money doing this, as we all know, with ads and all sorts of things, but what is the most effective way to get people engaged in your brand, in your creative brand? And um, I'm doing a whole YouTube series on this right now, all about how to get, um, really get people engaged. And I think as creatives, we have an automatic thing to show, and that is whatever the creative thing that we do is. Um, you, the guy who is a circus juggler and all that kind of stuff. What I mean, I'd be making videos every day and putting them up on everywhere, TikTok and and Facebook and Instagram. That's what people want to see. They want to be scrolling down and see somebody juggling. They want to see somebody on their instrument or painting or or dancing or whatever it is. That's really what we need to show off, and we don't need to worry about showing off stuff that makes money. We need to worry about on social media, and I'm not talking about YouTube, and I'm not talking about other things that might pay you. I'm talking about the, the main social media things from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook to even LinkedIn and, and Twitter. We want to be throwing stuff up there that's going to stop the scroll, that's going to stop people from just endlessly scrolling through their Facebook and press play and say, oh, I want to see what that creative person is doing. And I think that's the basic thing that we need to do. And as creatives, we have something for everyone to see. And the fact that we don't post, and I'm as guilty as anyone, although people on my Facebook probably would not say that I don't post enough, but I, I feel that I don't make as many posts as I could with all the creative things I do just on my own, but also for clients. And so I think that's the one thing that people should take away from this is that social media is there to show off, to, to be social with your friends and family, especially on Facebook, but with everyone. Because even strangers on TikTok wanna see you play the piano. They wanna see you dance and they wanna see you juggle. And that's what people are scrolling for. They're looking to be entertained. It's the new Netflix. Yeah, thanks Eric, it's good. Hey, c Dub, I throw it to you. Um, when Eric's talking, what I'm hearing is it's, it's potentially a lot for a creative who's also focused on, on honing their craft, on yeah. developing their ministry. Talk a little bit about team and what bringing 
a team to social media might mean? What, what, how's that been for you? Or what might you suggest for folks about not trying to do this in isolation? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think there's room for team, especially when you think about crafting videos and things like that. So I, you know, I wish that I had a record label and all that behind me that wouldn't, you know, at least, at least that wouldn't jerk me for all my money. <laughs> but um, yeah, the importance of a team is, is crucial and finding people locally who are good at what they do and different uh, concentrations that you can contract and create your own team. So like your videographer, uh, the person who's a writer who writes your press releases, all of that stuff. Um, and when you think about social media, for me, um, I have a couple guys that I really work with tight knit with video stuff. And then I have a, and I can do video, but I choose not to do it at that capacity for certain projects. Um, but then also a graphic designer, I do that as well. But I have someone when I'm like, this is the big project and I don't have time to really give it um, what I really want it to look like, then it's time to hire someone. And um, so I would say the, the, the simplest way of saying it is that you want to have people on hand that you consistently work with, even people who aren't um, the best in your city, but they're good and continue to pour into them and then bring other people to them because then they're going to get you to hook up, right? <laughs> they're going to be like, yo, this person is not just a person I'm giving a deal to, but a person who's bringing me more business. And so the more you invest into other people, the more you stick with the same people, they begin to learn your brand. They work with you, becomes more of a family atmosphere and you still own your business. Like you don't have to give it away to someone else. And so I think that's just a, a wise strategic way of doing it when you approach um, creating content. But then I, I guess after you formed the team and you created the content, I would say stockpile content too. Um, if, if you create a schedule of what you want your social media drops to look like and then put clips from like, so say you got one video and you put and you cut up nine, 10 clips that you're pushing out the next couple of weeks and pointing to the bigger clip. And uh, I, I just think it's crucial that you you kind of have stuff in a stockpile because you will burn out just trying to do it on a whim a lot. At least I found that for myself. Yeah, but that's great, crucial, yeah. Great words, CW, thank you for that. And um, you know, one of the uh, quick commercial for ACT or other nonprofits that help creatives, um, many creatives, are struggling to raise revenue, let's face it, for our own ministries, let alone the ministries of others. But ACT is a platform where you can invite volunteers and interns who can in return then become raising support for themselves as well. So let's say you meet a friend who's passionate about learning about social media, but they don't have the skill set yet. And they would like to learn, and while they're learning, they would like to invite others uh, to support them financially with prayers and help, uh, then they can come alongside and join someone like CW as part of his team. But it's also a blessing that you're giving them by helping develop them and leading them toward what they're designed to be doing and being. Um, now, I want to throw to you, I know one of the areas that you've had a lot of success in and I've appreciated about you is your ability to expand a small group of fans, if you will, or likes on a particular post. And in a matter of a day or two, have many more folks involved with that. Um, I know you've worked a lot with the sports program at Coastal, and you've had just a matter of a couple of hours to grow a following in a, in a quick way, but with substance. Would you talk a little bit about you know, what it's been like for you, uh, or how we could go about expanding our exposure. Yeah, so I think um, a few uh, important things are, one, you want to really understand who you're targeting. Um, each generation and each group of people that you're um, interacting with, depending on what your, I'll say product, but area is, it really depends on who you're angling to. So having a good understanding of um, what they appreciate. There's some generations that um, like small, short clips of information, and there's some generations and some group of people that want the whole thing. Um, and with that, I think it's important to really understand um, 
that and to kind of echo um, what CW was saying is it's really important to have a lot of content and to post often. Um, there's a lot of people that once they get attracted to something or they get attracted to a video or a topic or whatever, they're always going back and looking for more. And if you have them sitting and waiting to find more content to continue, um, you know, to keep them engaged, they're going to go somewhere else and they're going to find that elsewhere. So it's really important to find um, a, a level of consistency. Um, and I often with that personally, I use scheduling a lot. So I, I, use a little bit. I don't use anything electronically. I like hands on. So I have a physical calendar that I write things down on and I plan out my, you know, posting schedule with. Um, and then the third thing that I'd say is um, really learning and understanding trends. And that's not necessarily just within your own um, niche or own area. That's across the board because it's very easy to tap into someone else's area or link up with someone else who's um, being successful or is maybe currently trending a little higher than you are and do some kind of collaboration that helps both of you. Um, and I think it's important, um, again, as CW said, it's not, it doesn't always have to be the, the most famous, the, the best. It needs to be people that are good at what they do and that you can trust and rely on. Uh, correct. Thanks. Thanks, Noah. Shira is typing in the chat for us to find your audience. You know, sometimes breaking them down into subgroups can help you create and find the right content to share. You know, you want to be posting things that have great value for people. But there's so much content out there. If it doesn't grab folks, they're going to move on to something else, to someone else's. So, you know, be, be offering things that um, provide answers to problems or that get people thinking more deeply about things that matter to them. That's great, thank you so much. So this question is a three part. It comes in from Scott McIntyre. Uh, Scott uh, is an amazing um, musician. He's an American Idol finalist. He's one of our ACT departments. He and his wife have a new television program as well. And uh, Scott is asking about basically aggregators. And aggregators are are social media tools that allow us to automate multiple platforms into one scheduling process. Um, so I wanted to ask any of the panelists that would like to talk about the good and bad of that. You may all have heard of, of, of titles such as uh, Hootsuite or Buffer. Uh, those are popular aggregators. And ask any of you to talk about that. And um, really, uh, that's Scott's question. Have, have there been successful uses of aggregators, especially for folks who are posting heavily, consistently, and are also busy with travel and active ministry? Um, that would be great. Anything you guys could add, good or bad, there, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'll start um, on this guy. I, I have used Buffer and Hootsuite uh, a lot over the past. 10 years or so. And um, I think I haven't used them for the past several years because I found them to get a little unwieldy after a while and a little uh, less than, uh, I don't know, I just seemed like I got less reach uh, when I was using those versus using um, just doing it natively inside each app. Now, this is going to depend on if you are someone like Noah, who probably has not just his, but probably lots of clients like I do and he has to post and he has to keep the schedule insane schedule we've had this before where we try to run people's social media accounts it's very difficult to speak in someone's else's from someone else's heart and you kind of have to do that as a Christian ministry to your audience on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever so I have I have really quit using those and um, and really started doing more working right inside now Facebook and uh, Instagram just kind of came together so you can really use, if you're only on Facebook and Instagram, you can really do most of your posts from one or the other and cross post them at the same time. So you can do your Instagram and your Facebook posts right at the same time. Um, you know, as far as if you're going to include Twitter or if you're going to include other places like that, um, I, I am out of the loop a little bit uh, on Buffer, even though, and, and Hootsuite, even though I use them both. I probably preferred Buffer, but um, Hootsuite was a little bit more for free, actually, at the time when I had it. I don't know how free it is now. 
Yeah, good kid. My um, I will say that my um, my daughter-in-law is um, social media director for T-Mobile and Dish Network, and uh, she's a big fan of Buffer, just because of the immense amount of social media that she has to manage. So that may gauge a little bit your use depending on volume and and your audience and things. Um, anybody else? CW, Noah, any pluses yeah. minuses? Yeah, I, I would say I, I've used Hootsuite um, and uh, I think it was Sprout. I don't even know if Sprout is still going, but I used a free version of Hootsuite for a while. I liked it. Uh, it lets you post pictures for free, but um, I didn't see an option for video, which I think is one of the more important things you need to do um, is, is be posting video. So you had to still do that directly when it came to Instagram and Facebook. But I, I do want to say, I don't think either of the girl, what you talking about? Uh, that's my daughter. <laughs> I don't think either of these are a substitute for actual interacting with people. So even if you get it posted with its aggregator, you need to go back that day or the next day and view comments and spend time talking with people because that personal interaction is really what people are looking for. And that's what's going to keep people coming back and spending time with you and, um, and, and thinking, you know, as you think about like your niche. Wonderful. That's helpful. And I see in the messages um, some reminders that Instagram will post simultaneously um, as, as well as a service called Restream is another one that could be explored. Uh, the reality is, is we can also get deer in the headlights, right? Because there's so many options. And it's one of the reasons in a few minutes I'm going to ask Eric to kind of lead the conversation about the social pyramid that we're discussing because we're recommending you simplify things a little bit and not get distracted by the multitude of options that are available, right? Everybody and their brother is creating new tools uh, because it's a broad market, particularly during, during COVID. Okay, we have another, another question from uh, the registrants here. This is from Alyssa Davis, who is a uh, painting, graphic design, and web design person. Hi, Alyssa. And she just wants to manage social media better. I know we've talked about that a little bit. She considers herself sort of in the, in the middle of things. She's a moderate social media user. Um, how could she move to a, a super effective manager of social media? Anybody from the panel? I think what Noah said was great earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you remember what it was now or can you say it again <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say I think the biggest thing is to really um to to plan ahead look ahead you can you can never have enough content so even if you get it take a period of time before you really dive into social media of generating content and generating ideas and concepts and a lot of things um I say nothing is ever wrong it takes a, a anything to go viral nowadays and and hopefully viral in a positive way um but don't be shy or afraid of any ideas or any concepts because it's just that one thing that you you know you might have you know slid into the trash can that that would have blown up if you gave it a chance um and with that again while i why i like to have the the physical um calendar for planning my social media it really allows you to kind of look at everything laid out and of course you can do that um it, you know on a on a web-based platform as well but plan ahead and and have things build off of each other so start small and get bigger but have a you know have an initial post that leads into something else whether it's a you know motivation monday where you're you're sharing some kind of motivation that's linked to to whatever you're you know creating or or a, a, i don't know a, i think of a lot of people that do gym related things have wellness wednesday where wednesdays are focused around it's really good to have things that um can can continue and build on each other but um but build content and and never be afraid to to go with something or to to throw an idea out there yeah, thanks. That's great. And, um, you know, I was drawn, I don't want to get off track. I'm going to talk about Patreon a little later, so don't need to forget about that. But I just wanted to give as an example, um, I would recommend that you guys go out and follow on YouTube or any of your podcast services, a duo that call themselves The Minimalists, The Minimalists. And if you want to see an example of two guys that have learned social media 
and rolled that into a social media machine that has changed their lives. Some of you dream about doing your art, traveling and speaking about it, teaching others how to do it, and not only replacing your entire family's livelihood, but being able to bless others on their team who were volunteers that are now full-time employees simply by doing what these guys have said, curating excellent content, offering it to their niche audience, doing that consistently, um, I would really recommend checking that out. I think you would, you would really get a lot out of it, whether you join or not. Um, we're not talking business here. We're not trying to sell things to people necessarily. Most of us are here freely giving of our ministries. However, um, you know, these are folks that have 6,000 monthly partners. Everything is driven by freely given gifts. And a hundred of those folks are VIP tribe followers, and they do not allow more than a hundred people in that category that get access to special content that no one else gets access to. So it's something to think about. Hey guy, before we move too far over yes. to that kind of thing, yes. let me just answer the question, the uh, one, add one thing to the question. Please do, please do. Just focus on the the social media platform that you are comfortable on. If you don't feel that you are completely just, um, uh, you have to do Twitter and you have to do Instagram. I had a new client recently. He's not a new client. He's an old client, Brett uh, Rush. I, I, and we were talking about how to put his new single out. And I said, are, are you on Instagram? He goes, well, I'm on there, but I don't do anything with it. I don't do it. I just don't do it. I'm like, okay, then we're not going to do it because there's no reason to use a platform that you don't use. And so get use, if you're primarily on Facebook and you're speaking to your friends and family and fans through that, then use that. If you're an Instagram person, use that. If you're a Twitter person and you tweet all the time and you retweet and, you're, and you, that's your main platform, use that. But don't feel a pressure to use every single one of the, the, the social medias just because they exist. They, they all are out there and they do different things for different people. And so if you don't have an audience on TikTok and don't even know what it is, then don't worry about it. But if, um, and, and I do want to say that uh, I'm, I've been experimenting with TikTok and I think for artists, it is going to be a good thing in an Instagram-y kind of way. But if you don't do it and if you don't do Instagram, that's fine. Focus on your Facebook audience and your Twitter audience or whichever audiences you have but for her question, she's like, how do I manage social media accounts? Well, choose the one that you really focus on and you're used to and you're comfortable with. And focus yeah, on good that. point. Yeah, good point. Walk before we run. There is nothing wrong with using one. And when you get really great with that, if there's purpose to it, you could try adding another. Often we want to run right to doing it all. Yeah, good, good point. Great. Um, we're jumping around a little bit. I do want to get to Roberta's question here, but I do see a question that's coming up in the chat that shifts our focus a little bit to those authors in the group. Um, so it is, uh, Ingrid, you've got a question that says, can you give a strategy for social media releases for uh, audiobooks and books? And that obviously brings me quickly to Amazon. Uh, so I know, CW, you're the immediate author I can think of in the mix. There's probably others. Can you answer that um, strategy for social media releases on ebook and book? What's yeah, that been like for you? It's a lot. Um, well, one, um, before the book came out, as I was writing it, and, and you may backtrack if you already, thanks, guy, <laughs> as, you, um, as you're writing it, or if you already have put in the book out, um, you can send it to people and ask them to endorse you. So that could be people locally, people who are in your niche or genre, and then also people who may be faith leaders who, you, you know, who have a, a tribe, even if it's a smaller tribe, to just say a few words about you as a person. But then also if they'd be willing to take the next step to actually engage with the content and speak a little bit about the content, because those will be excerpts you'll use in social media. Um, you'll pick a couple of days a week where you're just strictly putting quotes or excerpts and you know get whatever the graphic is for the book um, I would get the background of it like the background visual or the cover 
and and if it's a, a really vibrant cover, I would fade bring it down some where the words are the big pointed thing in the middle. But make everything in unison as succinct as you drop it. But plan to have quotes from the book, endorsements from others, and then um, so one endorsement is just them as you as a person. The next endorsement is the actual content. So God did that for me. Um, God actually helped with some editing and, and read through the book. And um, Guy had posted about the book long before it came out and had said, you know, I bought copies. I can't wait to share them with friends. And other people engaged with that post and saw that and were like, oh, I'm looking forward to getting this, you know, or can I check it out early? Um, I think that's important. Uh, if you haven't recorded an audio book, I would suggest doing that or hiring someone. You can hire someone through different um, aggregators to um, to hire someone, and then they'll you know they can either take a percentage or you could pay them up front. But getting the audio book out, I think is is big. Uh, I have one. I've only been doing it on my site, but uh, eventually I'll you know put it out to the bigger mass. But that is also audio content you can use with the visual backdrop of the you know background of the the book, but it could also be like the excerpt from the book that you're saying, like you read and you could post that picture up and have it reading in the background where they're like, oh, shoot, I didn't even know it was audio book. Let me go cop that real quick. Um, and that that enables the different type of authors and, and listeners to support you. Like me knowing I'm a hip hop artist and uh, a lot of people that probably rock with my music um, they're not huge readers. So I intentionally wrote a book that wasn't like a big, you know, big novel, uh, a, a thicker book. And, and that was very intentional. And so even little things like that, like knowing the audience and branding in that way will help with your social media, uh, behind the scenes stuff. So um, you could easily, if you have a graphic designer who did your cover for you, or if you did it, you can show the different steps of the album of not the album, the book cover being created. So you can pre, you can fake record a conversation and you describing what you want <laughs> for your book cover, what you want it to look like. And then you can show the first draft, the second draft, and then the final product. You can either do it in one big mm -hmm. post where they swipe, or you can do it in multiple posts where you, it's kind of like an unveil. And then when you're ready to drop it, it's like, oh shoot, like that came out. I didn't expect that. That is great. Um, IG stories and Instagram, you can do um, Instagram stories where you invite a guest, maybe another author or someone that you respect who can speak to a topic or something that's going on in your book. Um, if, you know, I know that works different for fiction and nonfiction, you'll just have to know your niche, but have an interview with them. Just talk and let people do Q and A while you're we're doing a, a live story. You can do that on Facebook or Instagram or both. They're connected now, a Facebook live. Um, so just utilizing video and the content you already have, you'd be shocked how much of the content you already have that is yours that people have no idea exists. Uh, when I would prepare sermons, our teacher will often say, um, I know the temptation is to give people everything you have, but a sermon is meant to be um, weighty, but it's also meant to be a piece of what you've learned. They don't need every single detail about every little historical event leading up to what you're about to teach. So just a little bit, give them a little bit of context and drop them with the stories, the, the visual and the things that they came to hear for that 40, 45 minutes of preaching. Uh, teaching is different. Teaching, we might go hour and a half, two hours, because I'm giving you everything. When you think social media, think everything, but in bits and pieces as you begin to drop it. And if you've already dropped your book, it's not too late to do that stuff. But like Noah said earlier, it's just planning it out. Excellent. Thanks. And as we said earlier, you can see the time's flying already. So we're not going to get to every Sorry. topic. <laughs> oh, you're great, CW. Everything you shared is great. No worries. No worries there. Um, I, I, there's two questions I really hope we can get to from the audience, but I did want to give a few minutes, particularly to Eric and the rest of you jump in as you'd like. Walk us through our version of the, uh, the pyramid there, Eric, if you would, um, using that, that slide that we created earlier. 
Sure. Well, this is not something I made up. Uh, the pyramid is is talked about a lot in 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 things. I mean, I, I start to look at things from a a very um, top down perspective as we talk about having a lot of content, and especially if and even if you're creating a book, you can still have video content where you're talking about the book, where you're making trailers for the book. You got to think about a book like you would think about an album or you think about a movie or you think about anything because that is really uh, kind of uh, a, a video is just like a, I think it was CW who said earlier that, you know, you got to be one of the problems with aggregators with Hootsuite and stuff like that. It's hard to post video as, as easy as it is just post, posting it natively on those places and video is what people want to see right now. This is, we, we live in a video age, that's why there is TikTok, is because people want to be, make these short videos and make videos about their content. So even if you're writing a book, I think uh, YouTube is the place where you put the long form content and, and some short form content. Then you could take pieces of those and put those on Facebook, put those on Instagram, put those on TikTok, put those on Twitter, put those on LinkedIn, all of those places you can put your short, short form little pieces of video that are going to be um, be kind of put together. And so if you see the pyramid, you say, you kind of have maybe YouTube at the top, actually probably what's at the top. Well, at the very top is God, but at the, <laughs> the next level is, uh, you know, the content idea that you have. It doesn't matter whether you're an art, what, whatever kind of creative artist you are, that's at the top. And then I think, making a video is probably the next piece and then all the socials fall right under that but as a as a um, cornerstone as a groundwork on um, underneath it all is your website and your your website is not a social media tool but it is a it, it kind of can be um, you can plug everything into that all the things that we've been talking about plug right into your website and everyone should have a website because that is not rented land like everything else is. YouTube, Facebook, Hootsuite, um, pick any of the things we've talked about. They could all go away tomorrow. Patreon, all of them could just shut down. And, and many of them have. We've seen Vine come and go. We've seen lots of things come and go. We saw uh, the very first one, which was uh, MySpace come and go. You know, everybody thought MySpace was never going to go away. And now it's, it's a joke. But, you know, eventually Twitter could could go and and so but your website you own and control like none of the other places so that's kind of a just a short thought of of how the pyramid goes as far as i'm concerned and i think um it, it uh your stores may fit in there and where where you sell your music where you sell your books where you sell your art on pinterest or etsy and all those things may be a, a, a something that falls into that but i think the website is on the very bottom it's it's the it's the foundation of everything and all those things kind of kind of stack on top of it. Thanks, Eric. And there's so there's such a range, as we said earlier, of options and tools. We talked as a group as we were preparing for today about the relevance of Facebook pages anymore. And it could be argued that yeah, that's a great place to to stick some content so that it gets broad exposure. Um, how many people are really going there, really giving attention there? Maybe. Maybe it's better to shift over some attention to Facebook groups for a different purpose. Uh, we might take a few minutes to talk briefly about that community building. And uh, maybe I'll just step in here with that. And then I want to ask these couple of questions and maybe close out um, with anything else related to monetization that you guys would offer. Uh, so uh, ACT uh, has been building its own internal uh, community between our 400 ministries. Um, it's been an experiment. We've been particularly slow, uh, as we often are to the game with a small home office staff. But the reality is, is we now have 200 of our 400 members inside a private closed group. There is active engagement every day. There is more external involvement and networking and partnership between our ministries clearly evident in less than the four months that we've been operating this group. So it's very encouraging to us as an organization. I uh, would recommend that uh, you consider using groups in strategic ways to invite 
folks that are interested in your niche. And as Noah mentioned, even using subgroups of that niche. Maybe you can break down the people that might care about your art into even smaller pieces. Um, think about what that would look like and, and use some of those things. Um, but build, using community building tools, there's a large platform. You might have seen some celebrities using this recently. It's called Community. It's a tool called Community. Yeah, it is expensive. Um, but and then probably why celebrities are able to do it and drawn to it. But it allows them to text directly with every one of their followers. And it's a personal text that comes right from the celebrity and you have direct access right back to the celebrity in a, with a very slight delay. So you can see where things are going. We're moving more and more toward personal connection and involvement with the actual artists themselves. How can you draw closer to the people that you're interested in being in a relationship with? Um, it, you know, this idea of building community is so important. Any other thoughts about community building through social media from, from anyone? Okay, CW? Well, I'll... Okay, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead, CW. Remember. Yeah. No, 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 you got it, you got it. Well, I would just say that um, I have a few Facebook groups. I find on Facebook, which is mainly where groups are. I mean, I've had groups on Yahoo. I've had groups on LinkedIn. I don't find them to be long-term that uh, helpful, but mainly because um, most of the people that are part of them are very self-focused. In other words, they are really more focused on their own art and their own marketing. So uh, it's, it, can, it can be a thing if you ask the right question. And if you bring up a subject that's going to be, uh, especially if you bring up something that's a little bit controversial, you'll get a lot of a lot of people saying stuff. But um, I, as far and and it's and it's not bad for hitting an audience that Facebook won't um, won't like. When you post something to your Facebook page, as all of you likely know, and even to your personal page, Facebook will decide if they're going to show it to everybody or not. Pages are a little bit looser on that, and most likely most people will see them, and you can even mark them as announcements, and they'll get seen a little bit more. Stuff, stuff gets seen. Now, whether people react to it, I don't, I don't know if, if that's uh, as, as something that I've found that they react more to that than other things. Awesome. Thanks so much. Your sensitivity to time. We're getting close to a close. We have a question from Roberta. I think this is a really great one that none of us have really thought a great deal about. She's an ethnomusicologist, for those that may not be familiar with that long word. She studies the original music uh, experiences, it might be a way to say that, uh, in Native culture. So rather than in, in, you know, imposing or infecting other cultures with Western ways, Western music, helping them identify and celebrate their own style, their own heritage. And her question is, how does social media take into account cultural and culture and diversity in ways that honor and respect all of God's people across the globe? And that just seemed like it had a particular meaning right now in our country. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, maybe C Dub or anybody else. Culture and diversity. How can we be sensitive in our social media? I think a big thing for that um, is just being safe, smart, and educated um, in what you share, and also um, being sensitive. Um, to, to situations and just really um, thinking through that. I think I know a lot of um, major companies, you know, have posted thoughts and feelings and such um, in uh, on different social media platforms, but um, just really uh, thinking twice um, and being sensitive and smart with what you post. 
Very good. Thank you so much. And there's so much more to be talking about that with. Again, we will, with your permission, I'll email you following this uh, with an invite to join a group to continue discussing these kinds of things. I think we can learn an awful lot together. There, there isn't any one right way. And um, some of us would even say, um, could argue, is social media even the most important thing we could be spending our time on right now? That's a fair question. I think there's good to it, there's bad to it, but one thing we know for sure, it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Um, final question we have, amazing uh, juggling and circus arts ministry. Jesse's with us. He uh, wants to ask about paid promotion. I'm thinking he's talking a lot about in the area of ads. I um, mean, we'll defer to Eric on this. You know, um, we've also experimented with a little bit in the ads with authors through ACT. He wants to know, what is the return uh, on investment and avenues of, and approaches? Or is it best just to be organic with social media and not employ some of these tools, such as advertisements? Do we really want to get into return on investment on creative uh, endeavors? Uh, guy in this. Yeah, sure. um, <laughs> as far as ads, um, yeah, I've, I've done quite a bit of that over the past five, ten years w with and for artists and for my own brands. And um, it can, the answer is it can hit and it can't hit. You know, um, you can you can get that right audience. I think Noah, Noah was talking about this earlier. With ads, you really have to define that audience. It has to, you have to know that this is a ballad that that people over 55 are going to like, and that's going to be your audience, whether you like it or not. You may not want, you may think, hey, I want 30, 40 year olds to listen to this, and that's not who's going to react to the ad. Who's going to react to the ad is ladies over 65 sometimes. And that may seem like an old audience, but it's really not these days. That's, that's a 65 is not that old. It's, it's middle aged almost these days. And so if you are an artist doing anything for adults, you're going to see an older ad. And so when you make these ads and you spend five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, you know, um, that's, that's really penny any type of ad spend. And, but you can see some results with it, even just a simple boost sometimes if it can be, can work. And then sometimes it can't work. Uh, Noah probably has some thoughts on this too, I bet. Um, yeah, you, you nailed a lot of it. Um, the biggest thing is, um, that you could completely miss what you think your target is. So it's really important to identify what it is or have a little bit of, um, trial and error. I'll just use a small example, uh, for us, uh, as an institution, we initially started out thinking that, of course, if we pick high school age students as our target and continue to target them, that's going to bring us great success. Well, we quickly learned that it's not actually the high school students that have any interest, it's their parents. So we turn into uh, to targeting their parents instead because their parents get that information and then share it with their students, which then turns around and brings us applications and things like that. Um, but it's important, um, one, to identify really who your target is, and then two, some trial and error. So if you are going to do um, any kind of paid advertising or paid marketing, um, I always recommend starting small. There's, there are enough through Facebook specifically. You can do $5. You can do $3. You can do things that are really, you know, more cheap, more affordable, and they can give you a small grouping of results. But if you do, you know, five, $3 advertisements, and then you see which one was the most successful or which two were the most successful, maybe that's where you put um, some more effort into. But um, you don't want to uh, misidentify your target and then find yourself uh, pushing uh, efforts in the wrong direction. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I want to be respectful of your time. We're about five minutes over. I wish we had two more hours. We don't. Um, but I'll make sure that we get uh, contact information for each of the panelists to you in a follow-up email, as well as a copy of the slides and notes and access to this video. And then I'll also send an invitation for you to continue the conversation inside a Facebook group or other resource. Hey guy, could I make a, yeah. a final, yeah, final thing here? I wrote some notes as I was talking. Number one, if you don't, if you've never heard of a, a website called socialmediaexaminer.com, you need to go right now and look at that web page. Anyone who wants to know anything about what's going on currently and daily and weekly with social media, 
socialmediaexaminer.com. They have a great podcast. They have great uh, social media, obviously. And they have great, they just have the most up-to-date information on what's happening on every single one of the social media. So you need to check that, that site out and follow their podcast and their blog. Content we've talked about, content, content, especially video. Long form video is for YouTube. Short form video is for all your Facebook, Instagram, tw TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, any of those things, because that's temporary content. You're throwing them bits because people are gonna absorb it and then they're gonna move on down their timeline. And then last thing, make sure that you don't discount your website while you're building all these social things because you can plug them all together and they all kind of work together. Yeah, that's a great wrap up, Eric. Thank you. And then just the um, pastor in me brings it all back around and says, let's not forget that we are already worthy. We're princes and princesses in the kingdom. He's declared that. So know that he will use you mightily. Uh, he wants us to be obedient, to do the things that we can do, but also know, and I think you've seen it in your lives, he often also uses us to spite ourselves, in spite of ourselves. So I uh, thank you for your time. Press on. Go back and review the chat notes. There's a lot of good stuff in the chat, including some comments we didn't get to. I do want to point out Freedom. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, good parting word. Freedom says, I conclude that most, if not all people, want to see or will be attracted to your passion as it is displayed genuinely. Know your story and share it with the world. Do you know your story? Practice that story. Share it with the world. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, for those of you that don't know about ACT International, I invite you to go to actinternational.org and learn more. Certainly you can email or text me. Thank you to Noah, CW, Eric, Shira, all of you wonderful artists and creatives out there that were willing to give up an hour of your time today to be with us. It's an honor. God bless. Well, thank you all. Catch you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.